This is an orange. We're going to be using this for the science experiment today. What is postulated? Well, gravity says that if you increase the mass, it will accelerate towards the ground. But what happens if we decrease the mass? Should it mean it has more of a buoyant force acting upon it from the other side, which would cause it to go up? This is going to be an interesting experiment. Let's do this. The scientific method. It's an empirical method strictly there to establish the cause for an effect observed in nature. Step one, you will observe a natural phenomena. This would be, for instance, an orange falling to the ground. Number two, you will do your research to see if anybody else has observed this natural phenomena and done any scientific research on this phenomena. Step three, you create a hypothesis. This would be your postulation on what the cause for the effect is observed in nature. Number four, you make a prediction. What will the experiment yield? And number five, you do the actual experiment. This experiment in detail requires you to manipulate the independent variable, which is the cause, to see the dependent variable, which is the effect observed, to happen. If you do not manipulate the independent variable, there is no way to validate if that was the cause for the dependent variable's effect. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And number six, you analyze the results. This comes after the experiment, then you take the analyzation of those results and you move on to number seven, which is systematic experimentation. This is experimentation built upon the data from your analysis from the experiment. Then you move on to peer review. Peer review is simply sending the data onto someone else, sending it onto your peers to be able to review it, to do the experiment for themselves and to either validate or invalidate the results. In essence, this is a peer review right now. Okay, let's move on to observe natural phenomena. When an object is no longer supported by someone or something, it will fall, accelerate downwards from the elevation to the ground. So this would be me picking up an orange and letting it go and it falls to the ground. This is the natural observed phenomena. Number two, we do research. What was the research based on this phenomena? The research tells us that the cause for this falling acceleration is downward is from the concept named gravity. This concept is very vague and has no actual definition or cause for its origins. There is two explanations of this. Newtonian gravity, it's a force. And Einsteinian gravity, it's not a force. Weird as they both contradict one another, but want to be used in the same pond. Gravity is either explained in two ways. It is a force of attraction between two masses that accelerate the objects of mass towards each other. Or the latter, which is Einstein, is proposed that there is no force at all. The proposition that the space around the object will warp in the fourth dimension, as adding time with space, creates a conceptual fabric to bend. This bending of the space-time fabric is what causes the uneven distribution of those masses and thus causes the masses to accelerate towards each other. The argument is that the more mass, the stronger the apparent attractiveness. The larger the mass will always create a larger divot in the surrounding space. And thus the smaller mass will tend to accelerate faster to the larger mass, the closer it is. It's as, it's as if the mass is following a path over a slope. Another proposed argument is relative density disequilibrium. This postulation is based upon the uneven distribution ratio of the object and the medium that it is submerged in. The object's ratio depends on the medium determined by the relative direction to acceleration. If the medium is able to support the object's displacement, it will accelerate it upward until it finds its relative equilibrium state. If the medium is not able to support the object's displacement, it will accelerate downward till it finds its relative equilibrium state. This proposition is based not on the mass, but the ratio difference between the object and the mass. 
So in other words, the displacement ratios. The displacement shows the distribution of the pressure over the surface area to give its difference on observation. Just as you would see a huge container ship with thousands of tons able to float on the ocean and with a bowling ball only a few kilograms able to sink. Now, if we had to flatten out that bowling ball, it would displace enough pressure over the surface that thus it will not sink. This postulation shows that it's not the mass that causes the acceleration, but the distribution based on the ratio between the object and the medium. Number three, we create the hypothesis. Since the consensus is based on gravity, we will hypothesize an experiment on them first. Let's start with Newtonian gravity. Newtonian's law of gravitation statement that any particle of matter in the universe attracts any other with a force varying directly as a product of the masses and inversely as the square of the distance between them. So in other words, the larger mass will attract the smaller mass more and the distance between them would give them a different accelerative rate. Create an hypothesis. Still, the mass of an object determines the amount of force the object will be attracted to. It's the largest mass. If it moves the mass, it should show less attractive force and thus not accelerate at the same rate towards the ground as when shown to have more mass. IV, this is the independent variable. IV would be mass. Mass is the cause for the attractive acceleration. DV is the observed natural phenomena. So it's the dependent variable. It depends on the independent variable. Without manipulating the independent variable, you are not able to get the observed phenomena, which is the dependent variable, the effect. So remember, you have to physically manipulate the mass in this situation to get the effect observed. What is the effect? More mass would show acceleration towards the larger mass. In this case, the ground. So the orange would go downward to the larger mass, which would be Earth, if it's mass that causes the acceleration. The null is the antithesis, is the antithesis of the hypothesis. So if it is validated, it means your hypothesis is invalidated. If the null is invalidated, your hypothesis is validated. This is a prove situation. You either prove your hypothesis or you prove your null. No matter how many times you do this experiment, it will always be either proven or disproven. Mass has increased and yet shows not to accelerate to the ground. Number four, make a prediction. If I move the mass, if I remove the mass of the object, in this case, the peel around the orange, in the fish tank, it will show based upon the postulation, the orange will have less mass and thus have less attractive force. This postulates that the orange will either remain at the same position or it will go up as the counterbalance forces will be stronger. More mass, means down to large mass. Less mass, same or goes up away from the large mass due to buoyant forces. Experimentation. Fish tank filled with water. Orange with its peel placed inside the water to see if it sinks and its relative position from the placement. Removing the peel is represent less mass of the orange. See if it makes a difference in either its relative position or floats up due to less mass. So in other words, we stick the orange in the water with its peel, it has more mass. If we remove the peel, it now has less mass. The control variables, this is the CV. These are the things that you keep controlled to know that you are keeping a controlled environment for your experiment. The controlled variables in this experiment are the water is kept at a constant temperature, Water level stays constant. It has the same duration of time lapse. So you see if it's not going to change with a different duration. The same orange was used. Remove air pockets of the exterior of the orange peel. So there wouldn't be any air bubbles holding the orange up to give a null result. And it's kept in the same container. This is the orange. 
Let's submerge it in the water. As you can see, it is floating. This is a bit counterintuitive, as you would think this is the structure where it has the most mass. So therefore it would be needing to attract to the earth, which would be the larger mass. Maybe it could be the air bubbles in the pores that's holding this up. Let's clean the air bubbles off. See, we're cleaning it off, making sure that there is no air bubbles in, just as the control says. Nope, it's still seeming to float. So definitely not the air bubbles holding the orange up. What do you think will happen when we remove the peel, which is removing the um, mass? See, I'm cutting the peel off and we're going to peel it off so it has less mass. So less mass based on the gravity postulation would uh, mean that the orange should now float easier or be even less submerged. Let's see what's going to happen when I've taken the peel off, which is now making it less mass and sticking it back into the water. Just waiting for me to pull all the uh, extra mass off. There we go, looks nice and clean, you see? Uh, let's drop it in. Oh boy, we already see an issue. It seems to be lower. Hmm, there's an issue here. Less mass means it's gone lower. Maybe there's some air bubbles still in. Let's just clean it off again to give it control. Okay, got rid of all the air bubbles inside, which would give it buoyancy. Now we've taken that air bubbles out. It seems to have sunk. So this doesn't show a great result for gravity, does it? This shows strictly that it's the displacement of the object to the medium. This has been shown now to validate relative density disequilibrium. Then we move on to analyze the results. After doing the experiment, we were able to observe that mass is not the cause for the acceleration between two masses, but the ratio of the place displacement between them. This has shown that the ratio between the object and the medium relies solely on one another and the relationship of direction between the two is dependent on only its displacement relationship. This shows that if the medium is able to support the object based on the displacement, it will direct the object in the relative equilibrium point and thus set at rest until acted upon by a force. This uneven distribution of the object and the medium is what causes the movement and thus in its entirety has proven to manifest its own fictitious force. This determination means and keeps with the Newton's second law of motion. Then we can move on to systematic experimentation. We can do this experiment in many different ways, such as changing not the object's mass, but the medium's density. We can use different density ratios and objects. We can use different types of liquids. We can change the temperature of the medium or object. At the end of the day, it comes down to proving the cause for the effect observed. Yes, I said it. Prove. You either prove it caused it, or you disprove it caused it. You either prove your hypothesis, or you disprove your hypothesis, which would either prove or validate the null. You can't have it both ways. We move on to eight, which you guys are doing right now. Peer review. Well, that's it, what you are doing now, exactly. Like I said. What did we observe? Mass does not attract mass. So what does this mean? Gravity does not exist. It's just relative density disequilibrium. Well, thank you for coming. If you like this content, please like, share, and support the channel. Till next time, may the pressure be with you. Blessings.